Howdy! I'm Professor Curtis of Aspire Mountain Academy, here with more statistics homework help. Today, we're going to learn how to find the best nonlinear regression model for stock market index values. Here's our problem statement. Listed below are the annual high values, Y, of a stock market index for each year beginning with 1990. Let X represent the year, with 1990 coded as X equals 1, 1991 coded as x equals 2, and so on. Construct a scatter plot and identify the mathematical model that best fits the given data. Use the best model to predict the annual high value of the stock market index for the year 2007. Is the predicted value close to the actual value of 11,655? Okay, so first we're asked to construct the scatter plot. To do that, we need to make the actual model itself. Notice here in the problem statement how we're using coded years. So we have to use coded years to make our model. And the data set that they give us, as you see here, doesn't have coded years. So we've got to actually make that transformation. So let's go ahead and do that first. If I click this icon here, I'm going to dump my data into StackCrunch. So here we are in StackCrunch. I'm going to resize this window so we can see everything a little bit better. Excellent. Now we're done with you. So here in StackCrunch, we can transform these values into coded years. And to do that, I'm going to go up here to Data, Compute, Expression. I want to build my expression. And then here, notice in the problem statement, it says 1990 is coded as x equals 1, 1991 is coded as x equals 2. So we're basically, you know, saying that 1989, which is the year before 1990, is going to be x equals 0. So 1989 is our 0 year. So that's what we're going to need to subtract from each of our year values in order to make coded years. So I select the column for the years and add it to my expression. And then I want to subtract out the zero year, 1989. Press OK. You can label the column whatever you want. I typically leave this blank because the default is to go and, and label the column with the actual expression that was used to transform the data. And I like that. I like knowing what the data is and what they came, what, what they came from. So I just go ahead and leave that blank, press Compute. So now I got a new column here with the coded years. Okay. Now I'm ready to make my model. And the way that they're intending for you to work this is you're going to use this data to make each of the general types of nonlinear models that you're talking about in this section. Well, it's like five different models that you have to make. And then you have to compare p values and or adjusted r squared values. And, you know, it, you know, if you have to do it that way, then I guess you could do it that way. Figure out what the best model is. But I find it's just much easier if I use a reference sheet. So I'm going to show you here a little tool that I developed. This is a reference sheet that you can use for answering these nonlinear regression equations, uh, you know, questions that you get on your assignment. And there's basically two tables. So the first table up here tells us which model we need to make. And the second table tells us how to, you know, manipulate the options in StackCrunch so we can get the numbers that we need to put in our answer fields. So up here at the top, we look to see what the general model is going to be. And you can actually get this reference sheet. Uh, if you go to the, the, the website, you can look at the, where the blog post is. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know, just click the link in the description. It'll take you to the the blog post there on the website and then down below the viewing a window there for the video you can see a link to download for free this actual reference sheet you're free to use it um, if you uh, <laughs> if you're not in my class then you know you're probably not going to be able to use this in a testing situation in which case you're just going to have to work the problem so many times that you understand that when you see this type of application it means you make this type of model Okay. And you're just going to have to work the problem so many times that you remember the steps. Okay. That's all I, that's all I can give you. Of course, if you're in my class, 
yeah, I'll let you use this on a test because, I mean, the class isn't about trying to make him expert model makers. It's just giving you a kind of a, you know, a brief, you know, uh, look at, you know, understanding, you know, cursory look at, you know, what's the process for model making. So just to give you that general sense of appreciation for how it's done. So, you know, I don't mind you using a reference sheet like this on a test if you're one of my students, but, you know, if you're somebody else's student, well, you know, probably not going to get it, but hey, this will at least help you work your homework problems, right? So the first thing we do is we look at this, you know, first table, and we're looking for the application here in this area that matches what we're looking at in the problem statement. So if we go back to our problem statement, we look here and we see that we're talking about stock market index. So I'm going to go back to this reference sheet and I'm going to look here to see where it does it say stock market index. And I can look through all the different applications here and I see it right here, stock market index. So that tells me I need to make a quadratic model. So I don't have to make all five of these models to know the quadratic one's the best. That's really handy. And then of course the general form that you see listed here. So I know I'm going to make a quadratic model. Now I go down to the second table, which is the data transformation table. This tells me how to use StackCrunch to get the answers I need to put in my answer field. So again, we're making the quadratic model. Here's the general form that we want to use. To get there in StackCrunch, this is the regression option that we want to select. So we want polynomial. So in StackCrunch, I'm going to go up to Stat, regression, polynomial, because that's what the table told me to select. And here I'm going to select my x and y variables. Remember to use the coded years for your x. Take the y. Poly order here is 2. That's what the table here is telling me to say. It says in the options window, I want to make sure there's nothing I need to do. No change I need to make in the options window. But it says make sure that poly order equals 2. And we see that it does. So we've got everything we need. Hit Compute, and out comes our results window. Okay. We're looking for the scatter plot. So if I hit this little arrow here in the corner, there's my scatter plot with my line of best fit. Wow, that looks really great. So now I just look here at my points, and it's pretty obvious that answer option A is going to be the one that matches. If I want, I can use these options here to, you know, blow up the graph, make sure it looks similar. You know, we're looking, we're looking okay. So answer option A is going to be what I select. Nice work. Now the next part asks for the, the equation for the best model. We know it's the quadratic equation. But if you come back here and look, see the general form here. So now I want to pick the answer option in StackCrunch that matches this general form. AX squared plus BX plus C. So if I look through my answer options, that's going to be answer option A. That matches the general form. So now I selected the right one. To get the numbers that I put in my answer fields here for my coefficients, again, I go back to my table, and it says in the results window, A equals X squared, B equals X, C equals intercept. So this A, B, C matches what you see over here in the general form, A, B, and C. And notice that that matches the order of the answer fields that I need to put in here in my answer. So it's going to be A, B, and C. And those numbers, it says, comes out of the results window. This is from the parameters table, X squared, X, and intercept. So if I come back here to StackCrunch, notice here in my parameters table, I've got X squared, X, and intercept. So these numbers here are what I need to put in to my answer fields here. I masked around the three decimal places. So here the first value is going to be this x squared value here. That's going to be 1, 5, rounded to three decimal places will be 0.352. The next, notice we have a negative sign here. So I'm going to have to carry that one through 44.966. And then the last number is coming up here. Three, four, two, excuse me, three, two, point nine, five. Good job. Now the last part of the question asks, you use the best model to predict the high 
value for the stock market index for the year 2007. Okay, I can make predictions with the model. I can actually, you know, look at this equation and actually write it out and punch it out on my calculator, or I can have StatCrunch do it for me. Just go back to your options window, scroll down here, and see where it says prediction of y. You can put in a value for x, and it'll calculate that for you in the regression equation. But remember, you used coded years for your model. This is why I hate coded years, because in order to use the model, you have to put in a coded year. So we just can't put in 2007. We have to change that to a coded year. And we do that by subtracting out the zero year. So here in my calculator, I'm going to take 2007, subtract out my zero year, which was 1989, and there I get 18. So 18 is the number I want to stick in here. Come down here and hit Compute. And then scroll down here, and down here at the very bottom, I see my predicted value, 36,000, which is a long ways away from, you know, 11,655. So that's much higher than that. So no, it's not close at all to the actual value. So we want either A or B. A says dramatically greater. B says dramatically lower. A is going to be what we want. And I stick the value that we get in here, rounded to the nearest whole number. Nice work. And that's how we do it at Aspire Mountain Academy. Be sure to leave your comments below. Let us know how good a job we did or how we can improve. And if your stats teacher is boring or just doesn't want to help you learn stats, go to AspireMountainAcademy.com. You can learn more about accessing our lecture videos or provide feedback on what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.